Google Sheets comes with hundreds of built-in functions and there's a whole list of them over at support.google.com and there's a lot of really good functions but with Google Apps Script you have an opportunity to create your own customized functions and return back different results. In this lesson we are going to be creating several custom functions so some of them are going to be very simple and straightforward and then others are going to get more complex. We're going to be taking one that's going to take in the one parameter which is going to be a numeric value and then returning back the results after it runs that numeric value into the custom code. I'll also show you how you can use a range and return back a range value as the input for your custom function. In addition, how you can use the built-in functions alongside nesting them within the input of the custom function in order to generate an output. So in this case, we're going to be using sum in order to create a numeric value that the myDoubler function is expecting and returning back the results. There's also string values that you can add in to your custom functions. And in this case, we're looking at retrieving back two arguments within the function name. It's going to put them together and calculate out how many characters are within that string value. So the length of the string value. The other function that we're going to be doing is a sales tax where it's automatically going to take the value that we're inputting and apply a sales tax and outputting the result of the sales tax. In addition, with the custom functions, that gives you an opportunity to really make use of what's available within Google Apps Script. So in this case, we're passing in a parameter that's requiring one string value, which is going to be a location using Google Apps Script and the Maps Finder we're going to locate the latitude and longitude, returning back the latitude and longitude of the various locations. If the location is not found, it's not going to return back a value for it. And then you can drag it and drop it, and it's going to return back, again, the latitude and longitude of that location. So these custom functions provide you a lot of power in what you can do within your Google Apps Script. And these are just some of the examples of what you can do when you create custom functions in Sheets. Go into your Google account, go over to the Google Drive, select under New, and create a brand new spreadsheet. This is the spreadsheet that we're going to be using in order to try the custom functions. You can give it a name. I'm going to call it Custom Functions, as that's what we're going to be doing within the code. So once we've created the application, once we've created the spreadsheet, add in some numbers there, some values. And so that way we just populate some random, some data into the spreadsheet that we can use when we create the custom function. Open up under select in the Met top menu extensions, app script. That's going to open up the app script editor for the bound script. Give the script a name. And this is going to be where we're going to have our custom functions script. By default, there's going to be a blank function called my function. So for this function, We'll call it my custom. It's going to take a value in and use that value that we're going to eventually return back into the script. So take value, multiply it by value, and then add 10 to it. Return back the value that we've just created and save that. Go back into your sheets, select a cell in here where you type the formula in the formula bar. We're going to be selecting the function called my custom. It's going to require the one argument being passed in. So take the value of 32 and that will allow us to run the formula using the input of 32 and creating the output. And it's going to return back the result of the my custom function. And so this can be done for all of the values. And also when you drag it, it's going to apply the my custom function to the values within the cells corresponding to how we set up the first one where we set B1. The next one when we drag it down is going to use B2 and then calculate the new values accordingly. Going all the way to B7 where the val there is no value for the input. So it's taking the value multiplying by itself and adding 10. That's why we've got the result of 10 within the column E for the value of using the my custom function with B7. Let's go back into the script. 
and we'll create a separate function and I'll call it my doubler and this is once again going to take an input value and we'll return back the value of the input just by multiplying it by two and then one other function and I'll just call it this as a test function so what the my test will do is it's going to return back whatever we have for the value of the input so this way we can see when we select a range what's going to be returned back as the input so go back into the sheet select the my test and for the value we're going to select a range and run the code and we see what happens here is it actually populates out all of the cells the same way that we've taken them in so selecting it as three columns of input it's going to take those values and return back the updated values from the Google Apps script. Let's select the second function that we created, which is called my doubler, and we'll do the same where we'll select a range of values. So what we return back is an error with the hash num. So that means that this range, we're not gonna be able to calculate the values of the range in order to return back the result. So in order to run the doubler function on each one of these columns, we need to select them separately with a numeric input and then drag the function across all of the columns in order to return back the result. As the format in the syntax of the custom function is not able to handle a ranged value, it can only handle the one input value. So when we type the function within the function bar, we need to select the cell or we can select the cell that we want to return back the results of the function on selecting typing in the equal sign and that will open up the functions and notice that there's also a function suggestion so this is one of the built-in functions that comes with google sheets where it's got the sum of these values and in order to select the custom function we just start typing and it's not always going to show up it does take some time to show up within the drop down once you've created the custom function within the google apps script and then it's going to require a parameter so we can multiply we can add and we can select values such as a4 and then once we've completed we hit enter and the cell will momentarily display loading and then it will work out the result that was loaded so if you do want to use multiple cells within the test result of the doubler we can select the function and then use the sum function within that to return back the one result. Selecting the sum, adding all of those together, and that will be able to calculate the result on the doubler where we're taking the values of A5 to D5, and then we're multiplying the returned sum result by two. Because this value is being expected as a number value, and that's why we're not able to use the range but if we want to use the range, then we can nest sum in the middle inside of the parentheses in order to run and calculate the sum of all of those cells first and then passing it into our custom function in order to be able to return the results. For this one as well, we can drag in down and it's going to be able to calculate out the results accordingly now because the formula now is that it's doing a sum first and then passing in that sum value into the my doubler function which is the custom function and then making the calculations so there are a few guidelines to know when you are building the custom functions so when you are naming the functions it needs to be distinct from the built-in functions and there's a full listing of the built-in functions available at support.google.com forward slash docs forward slash table forward slash 25273 so that's going to be giving you a listing of all of these so these are reserved function names so you can't create another function with the same name it can't end with an underscore so best practice is just to use letters and in order to distinguish them from other functions within your app script, I do suggest that you make them uppercase. Now you don't have to. So the capitalization actually doesn't matter, but the names of the spreadsheet functions are traditionally done in uppercase as we can see within the table. So the arguments that can be taken in to the function 
can reference different values, including the cell values, that will simply return back that cell value into the argument. So let's take the value of full name, and we'll require two arguments, so first and last. And the result will be a combination of first and last. So you can use strings as well. Create another sheet. So create a couple string values. And we'll use the custom function. So with the equal sign and full name. So it's going to require a couple different parameters there. So just make sure that that's saved. And when we hit enter, it's going to take both arguments in and construct a full name value for it. Let's update what we're returning back. And we'll create a variable here that will return back the length of characters. So create the full name and return back the value of val. And we can add to the value of val. I'll use the back ticks again. And within the other value, we can get the length of the string that we've just constructed. So save that. And when we go back into the spreadsheet, now the new updated function is running and it's calculating the length of the characters within the full name string value. Let's do another example where we'll just have some totals and we'll create a custom function that will generate the sales tax and it will take in the input value and return back the input value multiplied by whatever our tax rate is. So this time we'll just multiply it by 1.3. So that will return back the sales tax value. And I'll just call it sales tax as plural. Select the function. It's going to require the one value. Let's update these uh, cells to format them as numbers where they're going to be currencies. And now we can drag down all of those values. If we want to update that sales tax, we can go in and update the current custom function with the sales tax and maybe the tax goes up to 15%, and that will automatically recalculate the values within the spreadsheet if we're using the custom function. And the nice thing about creating custom functions is you get really all of the power that you have typically within the Google Apps Script, which also gives you access to all of the amazing, really cool functionality of the apps that are available here. So let's create one more function that's going to interact and it's going to actually get the lat and lond find. It's going to require the one parameter, which is going to be the string value. So it's going to be expecting a location. So trying to locate and find the location of a particular string value. And then we'll add within the spreadsheets values that are going to be able to be found within the map geocoder. So creating and set up a geocoder object, and that's available within the maps, creating a new geocoder method. And then we can use this method in order to find a location. So for the location finder, let's uh, use the geocoder that we just created, and then the geocode method. And this is gonna return back, this is gonna search the Google Maps API and return back a value for the string value that we're passing in. So that's coming from the lat long find function. And this is gonna return back a giant object. And in order to do this for testing, let's create a quick test function. And we're not gonna to need to pass in a value. For the value, we'll create a string value. So I'll just use Toronto. So this way we can actually see what's com coming back. And within the log or log, you can use the log in order to see the object response. So running the test function, and we're passing in a string value of Toronto, and that's going to return back all of this information. So we've got the status of OK, and then the results for the formatted address, the uh, geometry. So we can retrieve back the latitude and longitude. And there's a whole bunch of information here where we can get the type there, the long name for the province, the can Canada for the country. So all of that information is available to us. It's a fairly complex object that gets returned back in the results. Uh, so we need to customize and structure that content before we try to return it back within our function that we're building. So let's retrieve back. And we know that we found it. So if the value of 
status. So if that's true, then that means that we found something. Otherwise, we're going to return back a value of not found. And if it is found, then within the log, we'll return back a value for the results array. Let's uh, try to run the test one more time as we're building out the response back from the function. So it was found and within the object, so this is an array where we've got an object. We want to retrieve back some of the values within the geometry and that's this object is where we want to look. So let's return back under results geometry and we'll see what we get back in that object value. So we need to actually indicate, because we might have more than one result, so we want to return back the first one, and this is based off of an array, so using the index value of zero is going to return back the first item within the results, and then within that results array item, we're going to look under the geometry property. So that returns back a location value. We can now use that location value to get the longitude and the latitude. And there's some more information there that you can make use of as well. So this is a fairly complex object. So sometimes it is good to go through and create a test application that you can use the logger to deconstruct that object information to get to exactly the data that you want to use. So run that again. So that returns back a much easier to read object where we've got the latitude and longitude. So now we can return back a value and let's uh, set up, and I'll call it uh, locat, and then return back the results that we've got for locat, which is lat. So under the location, so try that one more time with the test. So there's uh, latitude and longitude. So returning back the lat, and that's going to be under locat lat, and the longitude is going to be returned back from locat long. And what we can do as well, we'll log that out into the logger just to make sure that we've got the proper structure of the value and run that. So this is what's going to be returned back. So I do need to update this to so the longitude property name wasn't correct. And that's going to be without the letter O. Uh, so this is returning back the latitude and longitude. So this is what we want to see returned back within the custom function. So let's copy this code and where we've got the geo locator, we don't need to log any of this content. And this is the function that we're going to run. So go back into the sheet and we'll put some city names. And then within the function, we'll retrieve back passing in the string value. And that's going to return back the latitude and longitude for all of these locations. If uh, the location isn't found, it should just return back the not found. So actually, apparently, test is a location. Uh, so maybe we need to update this to be something that isn't going to be found. So it's going to throw an error if it can't read the property there. And if it can, it's going to try to locate it. So apparently, we need to, if we want to customize this for the not found, we need to still look under the location status. And if we do throw an error, then we need to just return back the not found. So let's update this where we're going to be using the try. And if there's any errors, we can get rid of the not found. So if it does locate something, let's use the try and catch. And I'll just do the indenting of this. And if we do throw any errors, then we can catch the error. And this can just do a return of the not found. So go back out to the spreadsheet. And now we should see if the value is not found, we should have within the column just the returned result of not found. Let's add in another city name and return back the latitude and longitude. So that's how we can make use of a custom function and then also make use of the built-in functions that we have access to within the Google API with App Script. So now it's up to you. You can go ahead and try out, create some of your own custom functions within using Google Apps Script, and you can be ready to move on to the next lesson.